Hi, this is Sarah Gartland from castironandlace.com, heirloom food ways and a modern kitchen. Today we're doing something with fresh pasta, uh, much better than the dried. Uh, in Italy, it is the focus of the dish. They don't have heavy sauces on it. So a simple sauce to highlight the flavor of the fresh pasta. We're doing a traditional mix, garlic and anchovy. And it's not that many ingredients here. We have it all laid out. Um, this is the fresh pasta. It's eight ounces of pasta, um, four ounces per person. Because it's already hydrated, it's a lot more ounceage per person, but it's um, a good portion. Um, a third of a cup of Parmesan cheese, one teaspoon of garlic, more or less, depending on your taste. I like garlic, so I'm at a teaspoon. If you love it, go more. Um, this is a half a teaspoon of the red pepper flakes. Again, less or more, depending upon your heat tolerance. I'm at medium's about the highest I go. So that's where I'm at. This is anchovy paste. Um, it comes in a tube, easy to use. You could use anchovies in a little can. Just chop them up and mash them up real good. I don't really like looking at their faces, so I use the paste. Uh, it has salt in it already, so I'm gonna add salt at the end. It's right here. And also at the end is an herb butter that I made this morning. Um, just went out and grabbed some things from the garden. Uh, thyme, rosemary, oregano, and parsley. About three tablespoons for a stick of butter. Pressed it into a mold and let it refrigerate. It was very easy. So um, that's all we need for this recipe. This is for two servings. And um, it's very easy to make. I'm gonna get it started here. First thing you do, um, I'm on an electric skillet, but on your stove, about medium heat. And you're gonna add two to three tablespoons of oil. You'll see I measure everything very carefully here. Um, let that heat up. Uh, browning your garlic and developing the flavors in the oil is the most important part of this dish. In cast iron and lace, we have a lot of recipes that are simpler, less ingredients. It's because the focus really is on the process. You don't need to buy some exotic ingredient you can't pronounce or do anything too crazy. You have to have the patience. So this dish is really good because you use high quality ingredients like a single source olive oil, a fresh pasta, and you let your garlic brown and take your time and let all your flavors bloom. Okay, so my oil is heating up. It's getting warm, hard to hold my hand there. So it's time to hold the garlic. Uh, you wanna add the garlic and keep it moving. If your garlic gets black or really dark brown, you went too long. So you're gonna add that in there. It's gonna heat up in that oil. I kind of leave it in a pile and let it heat slowly. We won't spread it out and mix it out too fast. You want it to heat slowly. Okay, everything is very seasoned. The garlic is golden brown. It's not dark brown. Uh, definitely not overdone. As I was browning it, I bumped the temperature down to control it. It was getting a too sputtery. It's one of those things where it's not going to be talked about in a recipe. You kind of have to use your kitchen sense on that. Uh, you want to keep it rolling. You don't want to burn it. I'm going to turn it back up now because I'm going to add cold things back to the pan. Always bump your temperature up when you're about to add something cold. It'll help you keep it consistent. So the next thing you want to bloom in here with the oil and the garlic is the hot pepper flakes. Now, I said a half a teaspoon. I'm gonna go a little less than that. I'm shying away from it a little bit. It's totally fine. Half a teaspoon is a place to start. I'm gonna do maybe a third a teaspoon. And then the anchovy paste. Now, it comes in a tube like this, so I don't have it measured out for you. Maybe between a teaspoon and a tablespoon. Um, I saw recipes that used a variety of different amounts. It's your choice. I'm gonna go lighter on it. Um, it's a harsh flavor. I like to just give it that umami on the back of the tongue. Uh, the Japanese culture and a lot of the Asian foods talk about umami, it's that on the back of your tongue. And if you ask someone in a Japanese restaurant, that's exactly how they describe it. And when you taste it, you'll know it. So on my spoon here, I have about half a, maybe a whole teaspoon. Um, I measure out onto something else because once it's in your pan, it's too late. So I'm gonna drop this teaspoon of anchovy paste in my oil. Let everything bloom. That means you should smell all of it. You should smell garlic, you should smell pepper, and you should smell anchovy. Now that all the ingredients are in there and they're not cold anymore, it's time to bump your temperature back down. It is a dance with that thermometer, with the uh, fire, with the heat level. 
it's important because technique is where these dishes get their flavor. Um, so you need to not be afraid to deviate from a recipe. You need to know how your own appliances work. You need to know about your own ingredients. Um, I'm breaking it down here. At first the paste stays together. Eventually it starts to separate. And um, I, if you are hesitant about trying anything with the anchovy paste, um, it's similar, I think, in smell to like um, maybe tuna. Um, if you like anything of that profile, if you like tuna casserole or anything like that, I would give this a try. It's not that far away from flavors that you already know. All right, so I have oil here with brown garlic, hot pepper flakes, and the anchovy paste. It's all mixed, it's all hot. Now at this point, I'm going to cook the pasta. The pasta needs 60 to 90 seconds. So you can leave this going. Turn your heat down so that it will last and not burn while you're gone for 60 to 90 seconds. All right, so I'm back. 60 to 90 seconds, this is what your eight ounces turns into. I'm gonna bump that heat back up. Um, you're gonna wanna work very quickly. I saved a little bit of the pasta water. Um, a lot of the famous Italian chefs use that to bind the sauce together if you think it could use a little more thinness. Um, straight water will just make it watery. This brings it together. It's just sort of like when you use uh, cornstarch and water to make gravy. It's very similar, so it'll really help you out. All right, I put my temperature back up. It is not burnt. It is perfect. You're gonna drop that in. Now I'm gonna switch utensils. This is much better for when you're at this portion of the dinner. Uh, this portion of the preparation. It lets you really flip it over, toss it around. You see all those brown bits of garlic getting mixed in. Okay, it's basically done. Now we're adding the finishing flavors. That third a cup of Parmesan, which I know everybody was eyeing. And of course you can put more on on top. And then um, the butter. This is eight tablespoons. You already put in two tablespoons of oil at the beginning. I'm going to limit it to maybe a tablespoon and a half here at the end. Really, do whatever you want. Um, it is flavor. If you get it too greasy, you actually won't like it. So, believe it or not, there is too much butter. So, just keep that in mind. Um, keep tossing it. You want to see stretches of melted cheese, no whole cheese bits, and you want that herb butter to be melted. Now remember, in lieu of an herb butter, uh, you can put in just regular butter and maybe a teaspoon of Italian seasonings if you want to. Um, that's extra credit. All right, so you see here the cheese, the sauce. It looks a little dry to me. Good thing I brought this uh, pasta water with me. I put in a tablespoon. It really gives the butter something to melt into. And now I have a buttery sauce. Um, I'm gonna plate this up. There'll be plenty of pictures on castironandlace.com. Um, but let me tell you, it looks fantastic. Plate it up. It serves two. If you're romantic, you can just put it on one plate. When you serve, twist it together okay and right before you bring it out there wipe your edges also extra credit tips so I'm gonna plate this up twist it wipe the edges and we're gonna take pics thank you